All right, today we're going to go over the active warm-up. In a little bit, we're going to go out to the field and take a look what it, take a look and see what it actually looks like. But before we head out there, let's first remember why we're doing what we're doing. We want to warm our athletes up to increase athletic performance and decrease the risk of injury. Luckily, uh, there's been a lot of research in the last 10 to 15 years about what happens when you stretch and do a, the old school passive warm-up stuff. So we're not going to go over that a whole bunch just to say that passive warm-up stretching uh, is actually going to decrease athletic performance and increase the risk of injury. So we know we don't want to stretch. We know we don't want to do things that are passive. We know we don't want to force our athletes into positions that they can't handle. So what do we do instead? We still have to warm up. So our warm up is going to do a couple things. It's going to prepare us to uh, prepare our athletes to perform their best. It's going to get them warmed up in a a planar motion and functional range of motion at the end range of motion. It's going to have a lot of transverse plane components and uh, we're going to get our athletes in and out of positions that are going to mimic what they do uh, in their sports or their activities. Now remember, uh, some of this stuff is going to be stuff that you've seen before. Some of it hopefully will be new. Just because we're doing these 14 to 15 exercises doesn't mean you have to do all of them. It doesn't mean you can't add your own stuff. and It doesn't mean you can't tweak what we're doing. Uh, if you see that uh, we're doing something that kind of works for you, but let's say you work with a tennis player and you want to tweak it a little bit to make it more tennis specific, go ahead and do that. Just remember, it's got to be full range of motion, end range of motion, uh, transverse plane component, and uh, work on getting those muscles to fire, get that neuromuscular um, stimulation going so that neuromuscular junction is sensitive. One of the more common questions I get is what about cool down? Should we do a passive cool down? So your warm up and your cool down is the exact same. Remember your muscle physiology doesn't change from before the workout to after the workout. So we want to take those muscles that are already fatigued and tired, take them once again through a full active range of motion and cool them down nice and slow rather than stop abruptly and do nothing which is going to allow them to get tight or to stretch them out afterwards which is going to increase recovery time. So warm up and cool down, exact same thing, just repeat it. Today's subjects are going to be Coach Brad Stewart from the University of Arkansas football program and Colin who is a standout quarterback from the Big 12. So take a look at these guys, go through the warm up and cool down, figure out what they're doing, uh, maybe make some changes to it so you can make it more specialized for what your athletes do and uh, good luck with it. All right, so our first exercise is going to be a full depth squat. There we go. Ready? So as Colin and Coach Stewart go through this, take a look at where their knees are, take a look at the ankles, hips, lumbar spine, shoulders. Make sure you're seeing that full range of motion, end range of motion. Do we have transverse plane? Now after they do a couple of these, they might want to just go down and do a couple twists. Do a little bit of a twist with the knee inflection, hips inflection, work that dorsiflexion, and then come on up. So what we usually do on these is do about five full depth squats and we're done. All right, our first exercise, remember we're starting slow and we're working up. So our first exercise is going to be a lunge walk with a twist. We're going to stay high. There we go. And we're reaching over the foot that we step with. Nice and slow and controlled. Try to get as much hip extension as we can. Working on that dorsiflexion. Trunk rotation. Nice and slow and controlled. Then these guys are going to hit the line and they're just going to turn around and come on back. Now we're just going 10 yards here. Depending on time constraints, available field you may want to go 10 yards 15 yards 5 yards so once again this is completely customizable to do whatever you want to do now the next lunge walk we're going to keep our we're going to keep our footwork the exact same but now we're going to go down to a low twist so we're going to take the shoulder of the foot that we're stepping with and take it to the inside of the knee go ahead There you go. Good. Get a little bit of a pause when you get down there. Now, notice on this one, we've got a lot of lumbar 
thoracic flexion, which we didn't have in the last one. Really opening up that hip, externally ro rotating that hip on the step foot. There we go. Then we're just going to flip it and go back. Now Brad and Colin are both in shoes here. If you've got the ability to do this stuff barefoot and you've got enough stability to do that, that's a fantastic way to go through your warm-ups. Make sure your shoes aren't cheating for you. Really make that foot work. All right, now we're gonna get into some conventional stuff that you've probably seen before. We're gonna just do a regular high knees for 10 yards and make sure we're using good arm motion, get those shoulders warmed up. Go ahead. Just high. There we go. Good, and then they're gonna turn around, head on back with the same one. Pretty basic stuff, probably seen that one before. Now we're gonna just we're gonna do some butt kicks coming back. Once again, nothing really out of the ordinary here. We're just getting heart rate going, get those muscles to start twitching, start working on some eccentric concentric loading. And then we're heading back. Check out Collins forward lean. Good. All right, now we're gonna do our karaoke. So we're gonna have uh, Coach Stewart and Colin facing us, and we're gonna do a, a high walking karaoke. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna do the, the basic karaoke footwork. We're gonna slow it down to a walk, and their knee is gonna come up and across the front, nice and high. Really open up those hips, get that pelvis to tw twist, get that lumbar spine, start working in the transverse plane. So as you notice on this one, we are keeping shoulders square, lower body is twisting. And then they're gonna take it back, same thing. Now if we can compare this to what we did with the lunge, the lunge, the shoulders are twisting and the pelvis was staying square. So we're actually doing the opposite here, twisting it from the bottom up instead of the top down. There we go. Now the next uh, step in the uh, karaoke matrix is going to be a karaoke with a squat. So they're going to use the karaoke footwork once again walking and they're going to get into a deep full squat. There we go. Now, check out the ankle complex on this. Check out the knees, hips. Think about what's going on with the lumbar spine, thoracic spine. This is one of my favorite exercises for not only healthy population and prevention, but also with the pathological patients that are trying to recover from injuries. Very nice. Now after we get done doing this slow controlled karaoke, we want to go through, speed it up, and do a regular speed karaoke. No high knee. You do high knee, you do regular, Paul. All right. So now as we speed it up, we see that Coach Stewart's going with a high knee, Colin's going with conventional just karaoke with the low feet. And once again, we're really looking for a pelvis to twist, get those hips warmed up, and there we go. Okay. All right, now we're going to get into our Frankenstein walk. Now, as we go through the Frankenstein walk, pay attention. There's uh, a lot of different ways you can do this. Our guys are going to do this keeping that leg straight, but check out their trunk. They're going to go into flexion. I don't want them to keep a, a straight low back and a straight thoracic spine because that's not going to be functional. 
Also notice that we're adding a lot of arm motion here. We want this to be a total body, total kinetic matrix motion, not just throwing our hamstrings up there. There we go, and then they're gonna take it back. So we think of Colin as a quarterback, and he's gotta throw a deep pass, he's gotta follow through. We want him to be working on that type of motion here, not, not trying to keep his back flat, not uh, um, skipping, uh, putting that arm motion in there. We want the arm and trunk and pelvis to all work together. Now we're gonna turn that Frankenstein walk into a skip, and you're gonna see arm work is gonna look kinda of like a jumping jack touching behind, uh, underneath their leg, and that leg motion is gonna be basically the same as the Frankenstein walk. They're just adding a skip to it. Notice we're also building up speed. We're going from slow controlled stuff to a little bit faster stuff. Alright, keeping it with the skip, we're going to go into our skip matrix. Now we're going to do two different kinds of skips. Brad is going to do what they do as the A skip at the University of Arkansas. Colin's going to do a little bit different variation, which is what they're used to uh, at his school. So you see Brad's a little bit lower, keeping more of a flat foot. Colin's coming up higher, pushing off with a little bit more plantar flexion. All right, very nice. And if you can tell, these guys are starting to breathe a little bit harder, starting to break a little bit of a sweat. They're getting warmed up. Now the last in the skip matrix is gonna be just a regular power skip. Now they're going for height, really trying to push off. Really drive that knee up, working on some power. And they're going to head it back. All right, now we're going to get into a little bit of backwards work. So what we're going to see is a backwards uh, lunge. Brad's going to do it with just focusing on the lower body. Colin's going to throw in some uh, um, trunk rotation. So you see how they're both pushing back. Colin is doing it pretty advanced motion there. So with my patients who are trying to recover from injury, Colin's is, is the end point. It's a little bit harder. Brad's is the beginning because we don't have that trunk rotation. Now as far as doing this with athletes, I would prefer them doing it with uh, the trunk rotation like Colin's doing. So you're really throwing in some abs, some trunk control, eccentric loading. And you'll see with Colin's version when he pushes back, when we talked about the ability for athletes to get in and out of a motion, that's why I really like this, especially the way Colin's doing it right there. All right, so they're slow and controlled backwards. Now we're gonna come back and speed it up a little bit. Coach Stewart is gonna do a back pedal and Colin is gonna do a backward run two completely different things. So you watch, Colin's really getting some knee flexion and then pushing back hard where Coach Stewart's staying a little bit lower to the ground. Really like the backward run too. My coach, my uh, strength and conditioning coach in college said if you can teach somebody to run backwards, you can teach them to run forward. It's not as easy as it looks. Okay, now we're gonna put it together. The way we just did it would take quite a, quite a bit of time, especially if you're dealing with a football team, something like that with a lot of numbers, just going back and forth with one motion. So what we're gonna do here is 
um, Coach Stewart and Colin are going to do one motion to the first line, just going five yards. Then they're going to follow that with a similar motion to the second line. Then they're just going to stride through. So this is the way it should look, the way I like it to look when I'm dealing with a team. So they're going high knees, roll that right into butt kicks, and then they're going to stride out. So combining three motions. Then they'll just head back doing the same thing. Now when I deal with a team with this, we're going 10, at least 10 if not 15 yards on each one of these motions. Once again, high knees, good form, butt kicks, and then they're just gonna roll that into a jog. All right, now they're gonna show you what that karaoke would look like. They're gonna start by doing the high swinging across karaoke just five yards, nice and slow, just walking, looking for good form. They're going to switch that to the low karaoke, once again slow, and then they're going to open that up to the karaoke jog. So high karaoke, low karaoke, regular karaoke. Good knee swinging across. Now we're going to get down on it. And then they're just going to open that up to a regular karaoke. So this is the same thing you can do with that Frankenstein walk, turn it right into the skip, turn that right into a power skip. Just take those similar motions and combine them. And there it is.